Hey everybody, welcome back to the Heart for Games channel. As promised, we have something a little bit different. It is a PlayStation Vita development unit. It is model PDEL 1001. A big thank you to Julian from Julian's Random Project for lending this to us so we can showcase it to all of you. We're gonna be going over what the difference is between this and a retail Vita R, some of the software that came with it, what it can do, all that good stuff. So let's get started. So again, this is the PlayStation Vita PDEL 1001 development unit. It is based off the first iteration of the PlayStation Vita, i.e. the PlayStation Vita 1000, or the Vita Fat, or the Fat Boy. Now, for those of you that are familiar with the PlayStation Vita, you're gonna notice that these inputs on the bottom immediately look off and very different. However, if you are not familiar with the Vita, let's go ahead and show the retail version just to kind of familiarize ourselves. So here we go, PlayStation Vita, the original fat boy. Beautiful little system, horribly underrated, but that's just the way it goes when you compete with Nintendo, unfortunately. You're gonna notice immediately that the bottom looks very different compared to the development version. Here's a side-by-side. -side. You're gonna notice development version has an HDMI out and a USB. Obviously, the retail lacks this. Now on the top here, of course, you have some color differences, but you also have some branding differences. On the cartridge slot, it doesn't have the PS Vita branding on the development version. And you're gonna notice on the side here that the dev version has its own power input, which the retail version, of course, does not have. In fact, this input right here, the normal input for the wall charger for the retail version, I don't think even does anything on this. It might, I'm not sure. Because to boot this thing up, you must have the power input on the side and this USB connected. Otherwise it will not boot. As you can see here, pressing the power button, nothing happens. It was meant to be in a stable and static environment, like sitting on a table, not moved around too much, basically connected to a computer at all times. Another nice thing is that I was able to go through the SDK documentation, the software development kit, and there is just a ton of information here. It is like going under Niagara Falls with a Dixie cup and just hoping to get as much as you can. So as you can see here, this is sort of a cleaner version of what I just showcased. It's the hardware, it's what all the buttons do, it's what all the inputs and outputs do. Here it is again, essentially. So jumping back to the retail version, I want to showcase some of the settings and how they differ compared to the dev version. So as you can see here in the settings, we end on power save settings. So let's go ahead and plug in the dev system and see what the differences are. Now it is not going to end on power save settings, it's going to end on debug settings. Also take note, it says that this development kit is expired and that's going to play a very important role in about a minute here. But instead of shooting the screen, let's go ahead and utilize that HDMI out. Also, my backup battery has failed. Unfortunately, I kept having to reset the calendar in this. So, boot parameters. Release check mode, development mode, or release mode, i.e. retail version or dev version. Same thing with memory size, console size, or development tool size. I skip some of the ones I don't want to mess with <laughs> and uh, showcase some of the other ones here. System, this just gives you a ton of options here. Interestingly, you can also select a limited or full range for the HDMI out. You can do a core dump. Graphics library. Content downloader, and of course I don't have anything to download here, but it says enter the URL where the contents are located, which I have nothing. So while I had this thing, I wanted to take full advantage of the HDMI out and actually record some gameplay footage, uh, which I guess I could if I had a PlayStation TV. But hey, why not? I wanted to do it from an actual PlayStation Vita. So I installed Wipeout. And here I am, want to go play it, but I run into an error. I'm like, okay, well maybe it just has something to do with that game possibly. So I try to install another one and I run into an error. 
So I thought maybe I'd go ahead and switch it over from development mode to release mode. Maybe it's a situation like a lot of Nintendo consoles that, you know, the development console can't play the retail versions and, and vice versa. So I'm like, all right, let me, let me mess with that. But then I thought to myself, well, you know what? Let me not mess with that. Let me do a little bit more research. So I reached out to a buddy of mine and he said that it not playing games has nothing to do with release mode or development mode, but it has everything to do with the license and the fact that the license on the system is expired. Now, remember what I mentioned earlier, that little warning at the bottom, this development kit is expired. See dev kit, test kit, activation, user's guide, functionality on these dev units is license based. So if you are not an active developer, i.e. you don't have an active license, stuff gets shut down and shut off. So kind of buyer beware sort of situation there because chances are if you come across one of these things on eBay or Assembler, rest in peace, uh, chances are the person who originally had it is not still paying for the license. Chances are that license has lapsed and now you have something that can kind of do a little bit, but not much. Apparently there is an exploit that people have figured out to be able to play games on this without an active license, but it's not really something I researched because it wasn't something I was planning on doing because this is a borrow and I'm not gonna do a big old exploit on something I'm borrowing. So I don't know, you figure it out yourselves if you want to, but uh, just wanted to let everybody know before you rush out and purchase one of these things. So next up, let's talk about Neighborhood for PlayStation Vita. It's the software that comes with it, or at least the software that I got with this. Essentially, it's used in development. It has a bunch of diagnostic and monitoring tools for your system. So for example, here is the battery monitor for PlayStation Vita. You can start it, you can stop it, it gives you all sorts of information. Here is the console output. And every time it moves here, I'm just kind of selecting different items in the menu. I wish I was able to play a game because we'd probably see something a lot more interesting. Now next up, this is pretty neat. There is a window capture. And as you can see here, every time my mouse moves around, it gives me a different color code on the right hand side for where my mouse is on the screen and what color is represented. I can adjust the frame size. I can zoom in, I can zoom out, all that good stuff. Here's the controller capture and replay for PlayStation Vita. Target settings, just a bunch of setting options here, obviously. Over here we have target operations, which includes things like rebooting, powering off, all that good stuff, suspending, and it also has another screen capture option here, which is essentially just the same. One really nice thing is that in the SDK documentation, there is just a ton of information regarding neighborhood. So if you had the time, you could really go through it with a fine tooth comb and learn quite a bit. A couple other fun bits of software here. We have a package checker, package generator for PlayStation Vita, keystone generator, param file editor, And I thought this was pretty cool. It's a trophy pack utility. And as you can see here, you have a bunch of different options regarding what system you're gonna be utilizing it for. You have PlayStation 3, Vita 4, then you can do multi. So PlayStation 3 and Vita, PlayStation 3 and 4 and Vita, all that kind of stuff. So I hope that you all enjoyed that. I certainly did. I was not very familiar with the Vita before this episode, so I did have to do a lot of research, but I had a lot of fun and I'm very tempted to get a Vita now. Uh, let me know what games I should get for my Vita. If I do get a Vita, we'll, we'll see what happens. I'd like to. Money's tight. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Either way, thank you so much to Julian from Julian's Random Project for lending this to us. And you can check out his YouTube channel in the description below. There is a link. Give him some love. And otherwise, thank you for subscribing, clicking that notification button, ringing that bell, all that good stuff. And we'll see you all next time. Games.